author is funded by the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, supporting writers from pen to publication since 1955. To learn more about the PNWA and their yearly conference, please go to pnwa.org. Hi, this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and I'm here at the University Bookstore in Seattle, Washington, with Kate Elliott, author of Cold Steel. Kate, welcome to Author. Thank you. So, Kate, you and I actually have something in common, writing-wise, which is we both sort of knew we wanted to write at age nine. Yeah. Which is which really? is the average age for writers, by the way, in my really yes. And like you, when I was in just about eighth grade, I discovered Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And my world was changed. Yes, I know. So this is true for you, isn't it? It, it is. Um, I remember uh, my brother and I used to draw maps when we were little. Mostly, um, we would draw a line across. We would tape together pages, uh, regular school paper. And then we would draw a line across the top. And then we would draw these underground complexes. And they would go on sometimes for five, ten taped together pages. Wow. And then they would be these elaborate places. And there would always be one dungeon, which was like a place where you could only get into by being dropped through a hole in the ground. I remember this vividly. And that kind of, so we did that when we were in late elementary school. And then in um, junior high, we developed a whole ship with an interstellar expedition and signed up people from school to be the different positions. Yeah. And then meanwhile, I started drawing maps. And then I read Tolkien, and then I really started drawing maps. So I, I've never understood what the compulsion is or why the brain goes there because it certainly didn't for other people, but yeah. for somehow, some of us, it just does. Well, there's something about being able to see your imagination laid out, and not just up here, but being able to actually physically put it down, is that? that you know what, no one has actually met, said that before. That's an interesting point. I'm, a, um, I'm an athlete, mm -hmm. and so I'm very kinesthetic. Yeah. And maybe the act of drawing and combining the visual and the act of creating it um, gives me, maybe I need that. But I, I also remember when I was 16, I wrote a journal, um, which I tried to reread recently, and I couldn't. Oh, God, you poor it was, woman. <laughs> I, I, it was like, I, I think I got to the end of the first page, and then I couldn't read anymore. Right. Um, but what I had done is I had drawn a map of an imaginary place, country, yeah. and then I, my journal entries, after I got over the initial being 16, whatever, was me describing how I was riding around this country and wow. each of the different places that I came to. Wow. You were just, that was it for you, wasn't it? I'm very single-minded. What do you mean? Uh, when I get an idea, I'm very stubborn and single-minded. When I get an idea in my head, I kind of go with it. And I was, people use, people would sometimes say to me, why do you want to read that? Or, or why do you want to write that? Or why don't you write something more important than science fiction and fantasy and I was always like no I must write science fiction and fantasy and I didn't really listen to other people I just did I would like nod uh-huh uh -huh, but it's a silly question do what I wanted. It's, it's a silly question was anyway if you wanted to why why in, not write science fiction and fantasy well, people have yeah I know I've, I've gotten a lot of flack for that yeah. actually and had teachers say to me I yeah. had creative writing teachers say to me why don't you write something why are you Real, wasting yourself yes. on this fantasy <laughs> stuff and it was just like because it's What's in me to write? One of the things that the fantasy writer um, must enjoy, it seems to me, um, that a writer of contemporary or sort of mainstream fiction doesn't, which is world building. Because even if I have to create a whole family in, set in Seattle, say, right. it's a right. lot of work and all the people, right. but right. I'm not having to create Seattle. Right. And you right. would have to make right. you, the whole world, and you must like doing that. It's my favorite thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I love writing the story, too, and of course I love writing when I write a story, what I want is people to really connect to the characters. Right. Um, but I love world building. I, I never get tired of it. And, I, and I'm, not, I'm not writing in the same world. I've done several, four different series now, and they're in, they're in different worlds. And it, it's, it's not that I couldn't go back and do more in the other worlds I've written in because I could, but I also just like the pleasure of making up something new. Right. And sometimes I'll have done something one way in this, and I'll say, you know what, I want to try something different here. Yeah. And I was constrained by the rules I set up for this one world. Well, now I can, you know, change that up. 
in another way. So each time I build a new world, I can do something different and in a way comment on what I was doing before. So in a way, my new books are also commenting on my earlier books. It's so fascinating because world building is like, it's like you're writing two novels. You're writing the novel, which is the narrative, right. and then the world, which is almost like, in terms of its creative scope, a novel unto itself. There's a couple of ways you can approach world building and how world building intersects with character. And I personally, and there, it's not a right way to do it, but there's right. just the way different people do it. The way I do it and what I try to accomplish is that the characters are seeing the world through their relationship with their setting and the landscape. They're not seeing the world through my eyes. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not standing above and saying and, and imposing my, my view on them. I'm trying to create a world in which they fit the same way I fit in my world. Right. They have expectations of where they are and who they are and how they fit into society and what they can do and what the universe is like to them. And my goal as a writer, as a world builder, and one of the things I love best, is to create that sense so that you feel you're getting insight into their world the same way, because they take it for granted, the same way we take for granted the world we live in. And right. that's, so in that sense, it is almost another thing. When you were starting to be interested in science fiction and fantasy, science fiction and fantasy was a different, feels dif different to me than what it is right now. It seems to have blossomed somewhat, and it wasn't, it was really in the sort of cave, the deep cave of the genres, whereas now it feels more mainstream. I mean, movies and tell, it's yeah. all over the place. Yeah, before Game of Thrones was on TV, when I would tell people I wrote fantasy novels, they would go, oh, I read that when I was a kid, or oh, yeah. my, you know, my nephew reads that. So kind of like it was a childish thing, and I guess some adults still did it. But, but now everyone knows about it, and I can meet a random person who doesn't look like they read fantasy, and they'll go, oh, that, yeah, I should try that. There, there's no longer that yeah. barrier yeah. to believing that it's not something everyone could enjoy. Right. And I think that's, what, that's the difference you're seeing. You know, William Gibson, when I interviewed him, talked a lot about science fiction. He talked about genre all the time because it's such an issue for him. And... You know, he made the point that things like science fiction and fantasy, that's just a sort of, there are sort of narrative tropes available to you that you use yeah. to tell a story. Yeah. But it itself, there's anything within that is sort of available to you. And, and, our, and Martin is a perfect example of what you can do that you're not supposed to be able to do within fantasy, the old definition of it. It's, it's limited really only by what you yourself bring to it. Yeah. So you can you can take any approach you want um, that's one of the things I like about it I was never actually interested in writing what I would call mainstream literary fiction because I didn't read it yeah. that much I mean I read you know obviously I was an English major so I read some <laughs> stuff but right. um, and 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 you know some books too. but I always gravitated to science fiction and fantasy and I think that's in part because of that sense of possibility and that I could speculate however I wanted right and create and I could explore any issue I wanted to within that field because you can. So Kate, I'd like you to finish the sentence for me. You ready? Okay. Uh, if writing has taught me anything, it has taught me what? Wow. Wow. Um, that you can never stop learning. How did it teach you that? Man, you know how much I revise. <laughs> and also because the marketplace is changing constantly and you can either adapt, there's like changing. I, I, just, sold, I just sold a young adult novel, so I'm writing uh, another epic fantasy for Orbit Books, but I just sold a young adult novel to a young adult um, imprint. And it's a different aesthetic. And I could either say, I, I knew that I was gonna get a huge long editorial letter from my new editor. Um, and I got like 11 page single space revision letter. Oh. Um, and I could say, oh, I'm gonna, you know, I don't wanna bother, but I wanna keep learning. So for me, it's a challenge to try to do this kind of different, this slightly different aesthetic to what I'm used to. So I think for me, as long as I'm still learning, and then, then it's all good.